hello guys in our last video we saw how we can create a basic endpoint in the flask application we created this test controller and we returned a sample json response and that too we did in the same file in which we have initialized our, initialized our application now in this video we will see how we can use sql alchemy and how we can uh, lay out uh, a different sort of architecture so right now what I will do is I will create a separate folder I will name it app and inside this app our entire application code will reside so now uh, I will move this uh, module inside this folder and outside this folder I will create one more file and I, I will name it uh, you can name it anything uh, main.py I will name it main.py and move it outside this okay now our uh, uh, app.py module is outside the, uh, our folder and inside this app.py I will import this application right now. So I will uh, remove this uh, line of code here and instead I will do app import app and then I will paste this command here. Uh, okay actually I have moved it outside the base, basic app so it has to be inside basic app so let me do it like this okay so now what i have done is i have moved this uh, module inside our basic app folder now you can see uh, i have imported this app inside this main.py and now i am calling this app.run so what this means is now we can create a different number of applications or folders inside our app folder which will serve different functionalities and uh, and not only that you can decide any other design pattern for your application so this way our flask is handy and we can change architecture at any point of time when we are developing our app and now uh, since this app.py is inside this app i will create one more folder inside of it uh, and name it right now i will name it let's suppose uh, i will name it anything like test app and inside this test app i will create a module named controller and this controller dot module will hold or controller functions so now here I will copy it and I will paste it here and I will import our JSON here. I will also uh, cut this right and here I will create one more module and I will name it routes.py And here I have to import our app, app as well. So you can see all uh, already our routes and controllers are being organized. That's, that way our code will not become messy as it will scale over time. So uh, from our app, uh, the input is slightly different. It is test app and then it is controllers. And inside our controllers, we have to find our test controller. Okay. Our imports are fine now if we go ahead and run our application and now uh, run the command okay now we are getting one more error saying that the app dot app has no attribute to run uh, let us see why that is or whether we have imported it correctly okay so the mistake we did here is that we have to name it init.py uh, and that is because init.py module runs when we initialize our package okay that way it, it will be able to set the path our application path or in both correctly so now if you see i have run this and our application has started okay so this was organizing our controllers and routes now if we go ahead and uh, start working with the SQL alchemy in databases so right now what i will do is i will create one more module and i will name it models and inside this models i will create a sample model which is nothing but a class python class so if you are not familiar with classes uh, you can uh, just brush up your concepts or go through any tutorial which is on python based classes and then you can get back to this video so the way we define classes in Python is writing a class keyword and then followed by the class uh, name that we have. So right now I will define a user and this user will be uh, will inherit 
it will be inherited from the base model of SQL Alchemy. So I will write flask import Okay, uh, I forgot. We have to first install the Flask SQL Alchemy. So to install it, we will open our browser and we will head to the documentation and we will copy this command. What this command will do is it will install our SQL Alchemy package. So let's execute this command. Okay, seems it took some time, but now our SQL Alchemy has been installed. Now we can go ahead and import from it. We will add flask SQL alchemy import uh, model import. We'll have a base we'll import from it. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and write model dot model. Our all our flask SQL alchemy models uh, will inherit from this model because it includes all the methods and attributes that are required uh, for it to work or interact with the database. So now we can go ahead and define the attributes that our data we, uh, table will hold. Uh, for now, I will write name and let us go ahead. Uh, so, well, for defining the attributes, we have to also define uh, our database configuration. Uh, the way it will interact with our database. So right now, uh, that configuration is done on the app level or the init by itself. So we will import migrate from Flask first, Flask SQL Alchemy. We will write Flask from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. Okay, so this SQL Alchemy is an object, uh, is a class which will take our app, okay. And it will return us an app as well. Now, before uh, we're progressing further, we have to install one more application which we will use to perform migration. So we will go ahead and type flask migrate. Okay, we have installed it. Now we can we have the import this. We can write flask migrate, and we will import migrate class as well. The migrate class works same. We have to initialize it and pass our app. We also pass. We also have to pass it our database. So here we will rename it database. This is our database variable. And now, if we go back to our models, we have to import this DB. So I will write flask. Sorry, app import DB. Now this DB uh, will hold uh, attributes which will be used to define our columns and attributes on the columns. So if I do DB, it will hold So we have defined our model and we have also configured our SQL alchemy and migrate. So I, I will go back to our, my init file and I will just declare a variable which will have our migrate application instance. As we are using uh, SQLi database for now, uh, so I have put this connection string as my SQL alchemy, SQLi database. And this project DB will reside inside the project directory that I have here. And this is how we set the connection string for SQLi database. If you want it to set for uh, Postgres or, or the MongoDB, you just have to change the key for this dictionary that we have here. Okay, back to our models. Uh, our model definition is uh, somehow like this, and I'm just adding a couple of more attributes. So I will add a each. Each hat also takes in. Uh, it will also require an ID, uh, which will be our primary key. So I will copy this here and set it as integer. And this integer field uh, will be an auto increment and primary. So as to set this primary, we write primary underscore key and we set it to true. And for auto increment parameter, we write auto increment 
and which will be true as well. Okay, now. So we are done with our model definition. Now let's go back to our init file and we have to import these models uh, because if we don't and we perform migration, our Flask uh, application will not take these model changes. Uh, I will show you as an example. So let's do Flask db init. This will initialize our migration folder. So it has created our migration folder. You can see it has also created this instance folder which which will contain our database. So let's uh, run migrate now. You see it has detected no changes and no models. So to do that we have to first import this. So let's write app test app and import models. And after importing models we will also import our routes which we have defined. Now if we perform migrate, you see it has created this migration script. If we locate the script, you will see a model definition here. Now uh, this alembic or plus migrate will create a similar table inside the database. Now we have to run one more command which is create, which is for the table creation. And now if I open this and locate this, it will show us a uh, project database with a table which will have user table. To we'll inspect this, we can download on an extension called dbsqlite, which you can find in yeah, this is the one it seems. How to perform these CRUD operations in this? Now we will modify our a test controller which we earlier defined and we will we will define two controllers we will define create user i will write that as this create user controller and i will write fetch fetch user controller users controller okay now to create it we have to first import our db so to import that we write app import db we will also import our model so and that is from our test app we will write app, test app from models and i will import my user model that i have and now to create our database row or data inside the database uh, we have to use this model it acts as a sort of an api which will perform all the operations or data manipulation statements on behalf of you so you don't actually have to memorize the SQL statements that is the best part about using ORM libraries so the way we create this row is simple as an object initialization and now we will initialize all the attributes that we have inside of it. That is name, one is name, I will write sample, sample underscore user. Then we have an age, which is an integer. And then we have an address, address which is test address. And now we will use our DB, which is DB session at and I will pass this user object to it and at the end I will just do db session commit and this will just commit the information that we have just saved okay now we'll go back to our routes and we have to modify this because we have changed the function name here so I will just write create controller and I will write fetch user controllers so I will also add one additional route so this one I will change the route name as well I will write create users and here I will change it to fetch users. Now create user will be a post because it is, it is much more reasonable to give it a it has a post request type because post request type is used for resource creation. Okay, so we are done with this part. Now if I just run this, let's run our application. I will do pipe main.py. Hopefully we will not get any error 
it is showing debug is off uh, I will just try to run the debug hold it through let's hope it works okay now debugger is active I will open the command line now and inside the command line I will just perform this I will just call this route the create user which will create the resource in our database so I will go ahead go back to my command line I will write curl again if you don't have curl installed guys please check your windows version and install the curl I will write post and then my host and port on which my app is running and then and then my endpoint name which is create users okay now if I had enter I got a success response and that also means there must be uh, data my data my row must be created now so if you see this you see the row has been created if I do one more call on this and perform a refresh if we can do a refresh here, I'm not sure yes so you can see two rows have been created now uh, we have to modify our fetch user controller also uh, to fetch uh, the data so let's go ahead and do that I will write users I will take all of these users inside of my user variable I will write db session dot query and this is how we query uh, our data from the database uh, for in-depth uh, usage of SQL alchemy you guys can go through the documentation I will show the most uh, mostly used queries in my upcoming videos so I will write user I will write DB session query and then the model name that we have defined user and by default because I have only written user it will fetch all the columns of user now if I do all so that means it will fetch all the records or rows related to this user okay now I will add one more key to this dictionary that will contain data and this data will have a list of users okay I will write for user in users now uh, I have the reason I have not simply sent this users on this data is because the data format or the type is different and if I send this users directly let me show you what it will give us so I will go back to my curl and I will just change the request type here and then I will also change the route name which is fetch users clearly you can see the error is coming up and it is showing saying that the user is not JSON serializable which means we cannot send this data this sort of data as a response because it is not supported okay now to now to send this we have to convert or change this data type somehow so we will do for user in users is looping through our data and I will convert this data from the query type uh, to uh, dictionary so that we can send it so I will name it I will construct keys so a user has dot name this is how we access the attributes and I will write age and then I will write age here and then I will write here each and we had one more that is address you can see address is coming up now if i go back to my curl request and call this endpoint you can see the data is coming up so guys these were the two basic controllers which uh, showed us how we can create data and query data in our following videos we will see further advanced queries how we can uh, create relationships between the models how we can create joins and how we can integrate uh, some additional services and modify and make this app more advanced thank you for watching guys